So with my scientific background, this project has really caught my eye. This is about the use of tokens for healthcare. How has not many people really thought about how useful the blockchain could be for healthcare? It will allow people to have their records kept on the blockchain so that people can know no matter where you travel in the world, what health issues do you suffer with? What medication do you take? Also, do you struggle to take pills? Do you, do you forget your medication? Well, this could be game changing. You can actually have an app which reminds you when to take your medication, understands your health hi history, understands lots of different things about you. This is what Steve and Frank are coming together to do. They have a crazy background in the medical industry. I've been so excited to talk about this just because I love science. I think it's so incredible. And I think if we can use technology to change the industry, to do good, to create a community which actually has a lot of relevance, is important. We have so much negativity in the crypto industry. Why do we not use this technology to do good, help save lives, help support people through hard times? This is what crypto should be all about. This is what tokenization should be all about. The blockchain technology is there. Let's start using it. So check out my conversation all about medical tokenization why not just start with how crazy your guys background is and how you've ended up really realizing that healthcare has a potential to be tokenized okay go ahead yeah uh, well steve and i met it's been about 15 years now uh i am a uh former i'm a retired law enforcement officer former u.s army anti-terror specialist and have been doing martial arts for about a little over 50 years so Steve has been a student of mine, and that's how we initially met uh, to come in and start doing private lessons in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And from there, we just started talking. We started getting into investing uh, with crypto, which was not really known really well, but so it's been, what, 2016, something like that? 2016, 2017, 2017, something like that. And so we've been involved in multiple projects and some very large and successful projects. And we have seen some of these successful projects do extremely well. And we have seen some of them falter because there's real, there's no real use case. There's no real utilities, even though majority of the time people hype that stuff up. It's always the promise of something coming or something yeah. that will be, or something, if the community helps them to build, we'll get into it. Or now it seems to be the same thing. Uh, everybody is pushing the same type of utility. It's just a different variation of that same utility or use case. So Steve and I, after talking for a while, uh, just basically one day while working out, uh, was talking about uh, a friend of mine who's also been a student for over 20 years, who does medical technology. And so he's our lead uh, tech team guy and you may have seen him if you go to our website um he has done hundreds of millions of dollars in uh innovative technology and upgrades for uh the medical and healthcare uh, facilities around the world and some of the largest ones in the world so steve being a former chief surgeon i'll let him speak to that uh, actually has some physical products along with some applications that I have and that we have together that we thought, well, what's the best way to put this out into the marketplace? So we have a US consulting company, but we said, what's a good way to do this since we're using blockchain? And we sit down and said, well, how can we do what others have not by keeping the community informed, actually having things out there when we say we're gonna have them out and having them uh, ahead of time, instead of saying it's coming, it's coming. We already have these things before we announce it. So we sat down and strategized and just said, you know what, why don't we just tokenize this? And that's really where it came from. Just two guys talking and, uh, you know, putting their heads together and their backgrounds, which Steve and I meld very well together, uh, similar mindsets uh, from surgery to, you know, the military and stuff, because you always have that, uh, you know, that, that mindset of you want to help people and you want to make lives better for people and do what you can to protect them uh, and, and help nourish their lives into a more fruitful life. So that's where we were at. And I'll let Steve speak to his background. Yeah, as Frank said, I used to be uh, chief of surgery at HCA Greenview Hospital, which is one of their flagship hospitals. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the largest hospital chain in the world. And uh, it's one of those things for me, I was a general vascular surgeon. And if you came to visit me, it was usually uh, extremely serious because you were 
very injured and or ill. And uh, concerning the latter, a lot of my patients had cancer, especially breast cancer. And so I, I focused on the sickest patients in the most need. And we're always patient centric and also anything to help the patient and their families get through a, the most difficult period in their lives. And obviously we wanna see people not become patients in the first place, but if you live long enough, I'm afraid you're not gonna be able to escape it. And yeah, that's uh, the sad reality that we have now, well, the life that we're living in. It's just one of those things that, I mean, just anything can happen at the blink of an eye. I mean, I had a, a bicycle accident where I broke my hip, broke my rib and tore the skin off my arm and it was a bad day. So it's just <laughs> at the blink of an eye, anything can happen to you. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to focus on healthcare because healthcare affects literally everybody. I don't care where you are in this world. It, it gets down to morbidity, mortality, complications, length of hospital stay, hospital readmissions. And our goal is, uh, again, we wanna to try to prevent disease and from the first place, but if people are sick, we wanna help you get through it. And we want to change healthcare and the things I just mentioned, those variables are what make up healthcare. And if you can change one or any of them for the better, then you've affected healthcare as a whole. And we feel very strongly that we're in a unique position to do that. Uh, as uh, you know, I have taken care of literally tens of thousands of patients and uh, we have the mindset of service and we want to, uh, to be of service and create something that's extremely special and unique. And that's why we did this. And you're helping people obviously at different stages. So it's even it's healthy people that need this knowledge in order to prevent them to become unwell. And then obviously it's support for your patients as well and their families. That's right. It, a lot of it's just so there's just so much education uh, involved in it. And uh, it's one of those things where if if you know about something and you can like there's 13 different kinds of cancers associated with obesity. And I don't think people realize that. So what you know, we feel like a strong part of our existence is education because we don't want to see you go down that path in the first place if you, because it's a lot easier to prevent disease than it is to treat it. Yeah, so. knowledge is power. Knowledge is a lot of power. The more you know about these things, the more you can be aware of them and actually deal with them yourself before you become unwell. Absolutely. And it's one of those things. And, and you know that when people are sick, they're put into an environment that they're not used to. And yeah. all of a sudden, a lot of people who are normally in control of their lives, they lose control of their lives because of their illness. And it's very frustrating. And, and uh, if you look at healthcare, it has what I see is three costs, mental, physical, and financial. And what we want to do is we want to help in each one of those uh, variables to make that whole process better for people and their families because they have enough stress on them as it is. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is to try to make things better. And so this is about making like a variety of different apps which will allow people to have this education, this community and bring everything together. Yes, that's correct. And, and one of the things that, that we have is, is something that's uh, called like a MedMinder. And to, to me, it's, uh, it's astounding how many people uh, forget their medication. And uh, I have glaucoma, and, which is a, really a devastating disease. And uh, I have to take eye drops four times a day. And one of the leading causes of blindness in glaucoma mm -hmm. is that people forget their eye drops. And it's, to me, I center my life around my eye drops because I call it eyesight in a bottle. Yeah. And um, so to forget medications like heart, blood pressure, uh, those kinds of things, glaucoma, it's just uh, can be devastating to your health. And so yeah, that's just is, one of the things we're doing. People. Yeah, it is. I mean, you've actually just reminded me, I take eye in the supplements. Nothing that, that serious, but I forgot okay. to take one. I find it hard to take one tablet a day. So let alone if I had to actually remember. So it's so true that people need all of these applications to come together in healthcare to have an overall idea of their well-being. 
But you're still young, Lily. And so it's like, <laughs> still, <laughs> I forget. I'm just like, now you've said it. I'm like, oh gosh, I really need to, I'll have that one later. But still, everyone, you, you go about your day and you forget about the simple things. Yes, that's very true. And I think that it's one of those things that that's one. And then the other thing we're doing is a, a protein tracker. And as I said, most of my uh, patients who were ill uh, were affected by cancer and protein calorie malnutrition is devastating uh, to, uh, to cancer patients. It's devastating to all patients, but especially cancer patients. And uh, when I talk to different patients around the country, I ask them, how many grams of protein has your doctor or your nutritionist uh, told you that you need to take? And they said, well, we don't, we don't really know. And so that's part of the whole education process because uh, a lot of times cancer patients, when they undergo chemo, radiation, surgery, that sort of thing, their protein requirements are sometimes 3 x and they don't realize that. And why, why is that? Why is there such a requirement for protein? Well, it's because, uh, number one, you, you kind of get into a hyper metabolic state when you get sick and mm -hmm. your body is utilizing muscle for fuel. And so you start losing weight. It's called cachexia and it can be devastating. As a matter of fact, uh, anywhere from uh, 50 to 90 percent, depending on the literature that you read, uh, is reporting that uh, those kinds of percentages are involved in cancer patient deaths. So if you look at it uh, in the United States, there's over 600,000 cancer patient deaths per year and protein calorie malnutrition plays a role in over 300,000 of those. Wow. And so that's why I created a, uh, a snack uh, to help patients uh, meet their protein needs because they get sick. It, when you're sick, uh, your GI tract is uh, not as functional as it should be. And that could be due to pain, pain medication, inactivity, radiation therapy will uh, a lot of times uh, decrease absorption of the protein you do eat. So you have to eat more to overcome that. So there's a lot of, of complex variables that go into all of that. And it's very individual. And so it's not just a cookbook, but it's one of those things where patients need to understand how many grams of protein should I eat per day? And then we help them with that, not only in regards to keeping up with the number, but also provide something they tolerate rather than uh, something they, they get sick when they try to eat their protein or drink their protein because uh, the volume by these liquid sources of protein does nothing but increase the chance of getting sick. And so we've tested this product all over the country and uh, knock on wood, we've not had one patient get sick. Everybody's tolerated and enjoyed it. So I've been very pleased with the results thus far. Yeah, I think it's so interesting going down the education route because I think so many people now Google what's wrong with them or to find out knowledge, they go to really quite incorrect sources so allowing people to have a source to go to which is coming from doctors and allowing them to actually directly almost speak with their patients will have so much importance rather than people going to the wrong sources yeah an internet doctor is a dangerous thing yes <laughs> yeah it's a dangerous thing and i had a patient uh it was a female patient and you know, it's one of those things that's kind of unbelievable, but she comes into my office and she says, like, I, I guarantee you it's, uh, I've got prostate cancer. And I said, uh, one thing I can tell you, there's not too many certainties in medicine, but I can guarantee you, you don't have prostate cancer because you don't have a prostate. So, <laughs> so, you know, an, an internet doctor is a very dangerous thing. And there's a lot of people that, uh, that think they they're doctors, but they're not mm -hmm. because they haven't been to med school and the residency mm -hmm. program and and surgery is is kind of inarguable in many ways because there's a lot of people that can discuss a lot of different things in medicine, but a gunshot wound to the abdomen, you, there's nothing you have to discuss on that one. You just go mm -hmm. right to the OR. So, you know, what we like to do is we like to give people uh, the best honest approach to try to prevent disease. And then if you do get sick, how to get better faster. 
Yeah. And so why did you choose to, you know, go ahead and tokenize this? Why has this sort of digitalization become so important to you? Because, um, and I'll take this. No, that's you. Because the, uh, our tech team in developing and utilizing all the blockchain applications, it's kind of a waste not to tokenize some of those applications because not just that we work with individuals or which would be our community or you know the token holders and, and the, the community at large, but also corporations and large healthcare entities to help them to help their patients. Um, and by doing so, it allows us to continue to even further advance our research and development. And that's one of the easiest mechanisms to do that because we're utilizing the blockchain already and utilizing smart contracts and by doing that, uh, per our consulting companies, uh, the best way to do it would be to actually tokenize it because you're, you're giving to the communities. You're also, the company is growing, which allows you to put even more techs on and to even do deeper and, and uh, more uh, widespread development of the different applications that we're looking at. Yeah, because I guess most like tokenized communities really are quite limited, whereas this is yes. not limited at all. You're, you're talking about healthy people, unhealthy people, people that are patients, people that are family. So really, the community is never ending. It's, it's, yes. It incorporates everyone. It's not limited like a lot of other communities are. This isn't. Correct. And so, and you have like the possibility of growing it globally and really reaching. Well, we have a lot of global partners right now that we're working with. Uh, we don't give anything out as like we mentioned before, uh, yeah. you know, as we talk privately. Uh, but we do have uh, some negotiations going on and some things that will just absolutely blow the minds of those who are involved with the uh, RAM medical health token and our community. Um, as Steve said, not just his art, but we have two or three internal artists that uh, will be part of our NFT platform, which will be coming out in the next couple of weeks versus mm -hmm. the first of next year. Uh, and that will be connected with uh, a large charity, which is an international charity, which I can let Steve speak with for a moment, but there, there's a lot of good that we wanna do. And of course there will be money that Steve and I will make, but that is not the main reason because um, God has blessed us, so we do very well. But um, a lot of this boils down to the fact that we want to be service oriented for people uh, and for companies, and also the fact that we have just seen so many token companies, or uh, whether they're corporations or whether they're just somebody sitting in a garage that, you know, a 14 year old that made a token up whoever they are, you will see their market caps grow into the billions and then you will see them clean out those market caps or yeah. Yeah. everybody gets hyped up. And then the next thing you know, they've got nothing done and they miss deadline. They miss a deadline. They don't even actually do what they're talking about. They'll talk about getting on a tier one exchange. They have never even applied for tier one exchanges. So those things just kill communities and it gives crypto a, a bad name overall. Mm -hmm. And the crypto space need some positivity and need some actual uh, token companies or coin companies that are coming out with legitimate, real use case, real utilities, and that are looking for the future because blockchain is the future. And, and as it grows, you don't need that negative stigmatism attached to it that everybody in the token communities are shysters um, because all they're doing, a lot of them, they're just, I'll just, I'm plain spoken. So they're just, they'll just lie. You know, yes. and th they'll just hype and lie, as Steve and I talk about. And we thought, well, how can we be unique and different? So with the different utilities that we already have created, the ones that are underway, like we talked about, we are working with helping some organizations to do what's called uh, become Cures Act compliant. So when that happens in December of 2023, if these healthcare organizations are, are not Cures Act compliant, it's kind of like the HIPAA here in the US, uh, which is a privacy thing uh, for healthcare. Those companies will be fined tremendously. And we're talking an extreme amount of money. So they have to, at that time, be able to let you walk in with your phone, tablet, whatever, or your computer. You then are able to download your medical records, any scans, any x-rays, everything about your life. Uh, as far as medical history, you have to be able to have up to date on you. And if they can't provide that for both their end and your end as a patient, 
then they're in violation of the Cures Act uh, because it's a medical information blocking act that is will be federal law at that time. Yeah, because as you say, a lot of these I hear about so many different tokens that people haven't really thought about how this is benefiting people. As you say, there's a lot of scams, people are trying to boost things, whereas actually you have this incredible medical background and bringing that into the real world, allowing it to become digitalized. As you say, it's it's what's needed, like legislations require it. So why not just use the blockchain technology? This technology is existing now and it's there to be used. So this is really exciting in the space, I think. And is there anyone else doing something similar? Similar to this that you know of at many medical and like, decentralized applications? Well, we have researched most of them and there are a couple, but they're not doing what we're doing. You may see somebody that's involved in stem cells, um, but they are not, and, and you can't promise, and I won't say who it is, but you can't promise your communities that they're going to be the next thing in stem cell research and development if you're not really even involved in the medical community to do that in the first place. Yeah. That's a hope and a prayer. Um, and there's others who do them uh, internationally that just provide like telehealth or uh, medical information, like electronic health records, but they're not done to the extent and the way that it has to be regulated here in the US. If you do it the way it has to be regulated here in the US, which has some, as you can read every day, just about some of the strictest regulations in the world on not just crypto, but blockchain and, and, and medical information and data sharing, then once you can appease and meet all those requirements uh, and certifications, then anywhere in the world should not be an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that's the thing. It's just it's really important to utilize this technology to do good, to actually help people. Um, you guys have obviously been helping people for many years. So it's actually just allowing to even spread out your reach and help, as you say, help people early on so that they don't get to the stage of being patients and be there to support people when they do become patients. Yes. Well, we're in this for the long haul. We're not in this for some pump and dump scheme. Yeah. That's not it does not match our personalities. Mm -hmm. And well, we were service oriented and we're using our backgrounds to make advancements. So we, we, uh, we feel morally, ethically, professionally obligated to do what we say we're going to do. And I think that uh, to be an advocate uh, for somebody, I think that that's very important because a lot of people have no idea what they're stepping into a lot of times when they get into the medical world. And again, they're frightened and a lot of times misinformed. And what we want to do is we want to provide clear, concise information to help people through their journeys. And uh, we, we want to be here years from now uh, adapting, growing along because there's, as long as there are human beings involved, there's going to be change. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to, to make positive uh, adoptions of things that will help people. And just like uh, Frank was talking about, like these medical records, some I've actually talked to people who don't use anything but paper still. And that would just be an absolute nightmare. That is a nightmare. And, you know, take it from somebody, I, I went into practice with an, with an elderly surgeon when I first started. He had charts dating back to the 1940s. And I mean, it was thousands and thousands of, of charts. And, and so all of those kinds of things, we, you know, we, we've got to get out of the whole Pony Express days. We've got to get in and update, modernize, and make things better, cheaper, faster, and more efficient. That's what we're here for. Yeah, that's actually very true. It's actually, it would really actually reduce fees because people will have easy access to medical advice. They're not always having to, you know, and to, to be able to stay on top of their own medical history is really important because people can't even remember, when did this happen to me? When did this happen to me? And if we don't have, you know, clear visibility across the board, it could be detrimental to some patients. Yes, because you could have to wait. We have examples or stories from people who, from healthcare providers who talk, they work with some of the largest organizations in the world for either insurance or healthcare administration within an actual healthcare facility that will tell you that when they are waiting for a diagnosis or to look at a patient, instead of having that instantaneously, they've literally had to drive 50, 100 miles to pick up 
uh, a CD so that they could get the scans there quickly to the new doctor or to the specialist. And those are things that, it, it, you know, some people may not have that amount of time to wait two or three days to get that in. Uh, they need to be seen in 80, you know, days, as Steve can tell you, I'm just a PhD, but he's the medical doctor, um, can tell you that, you know, moments matter. So that's why, you know, what we're doing and what we feel the community as a whole can do will, will benefit, you know, all mankind. And as far as uh, dedication. Steve and I both have been married to our respective wives for 38 years. So that tells you that, uh, you know, we're pretty dedicated to a purpose. <laughs> and those are our blockchain masters, our wives. So <laughs> they control us. <laughs> we all have to have that control on us. I mean, I think it's incredible. I think especially the healthcare system really does need modernization. I think we've realized this more and more in the last couple of years that there's so much progression that does need to be made. Uh, and the possibilities are there. We, as I say, we have the technology, so why not do this? And how about, let's talk about your NFT project quickly because I just want to be able to share that with my audience. So tell me a little bit about it, please. What we're doing at first is we're launching, uh, when people go to our website, which is the rmhtoken.com, they will see an extra link at the top which will say RMH NFTs. And then it will be uh, NFTs that they can actually mint uh, that will be Steve's art uh, along with other artists that we have uh, that we're connected with. And as they purchase or mint those, to or, excuse me, those NFTs, what will happen is we give a small percentage away and to different charities. And mm -hmm. so it will not just be for us or for the artists, who will obviously make something off of it, but it's also, and it will be visible for anybody to know how much, uh, that will be going back to like the um, United Nations for their food bank or the World Bank, I think it's called, um, as well as other charities. Yeah, I had uh, I had made a uh, one of my first NFTs and I've done a painting like this and I've trademarked something that's called Why on Earth? And it's just a, the big blue marble with a Y on it, it's an emphatic statement of why on earth. And uh, one of the things that I would like to see happen is that it be used in the uh, collaboration between World Bank and United Nation 17 Sustainable Developmental Goals, which is uh, really all related to human health. And just for example, uh, health and well being is one of their targets. And if you look at the United States, I just looked at some of the data. The CDC has reported that over 42% of American adults are, are obese. It's like, why on earth? Do we, why on earth do we allow that? And yeah, so yeah. we want to become involved with, I saw the pink ribbon become a logo for breast cancer that I think it generates over like $6 billion worth of um, uh, sales per year. So that has done nothing but increase awareness, which is what we're talking about, yeah. as well as uh, it gives some solidarity and participation. And most of my cancer patients had breast cancer, and they were delighted to know that they were not alone in this whole journey, is that people were wearing the support. And so it's very meaningful to know that you're not alone. Yeah, and I think yeah. there's like 250 websites devoted to breast cancer. And so it's it's like we're all trying to help each other. And so that's one of the reasons even our NFTs are going to have some sort of medical use uh, in regards to that, because you know we want to become involved with uh, all of this on a global scale, because uh, it's not just it, it's a changed world. And uh, it's one of those things where we feel that we know we can make it better. Yeah, I think it's so right. I think when we talk about community, really, we healthcare is never really discussed as much. And actually, the fact that you guys are doing this, raising so much awareness is going to be so, so important going forward, because the only way to prevent things from happening is actually making people aware of the potential of what could happen. And, and as you say, having support through the whole process, which they might feel that they don't have. Exactly. And it, it's very meaningful to know that you're not alone. I, yeah. You know, I remember when my dad, my mom had ovarian cancer, she survived, but he had a terrible time he, uh, trying to find her something to eat, which is one of the reasons I created the protein snack. But he, he described it to me. I was in, in the surgical residency at the time, and he was just describing the loneliness that he felt 
just trying his best to, to get something for my mom to eat. And so these kinds of things to let people like my father know uh, going forward, they're not alone in this and that we're all here to, uh, to make a positive difference in one another's lives. I mean, what a positive, I mean, there's so many NFTs out there and a lot of them have no positivity behind them. There's nothing really to back what they're doing. So I think it's, it's a beautiful thing to create a community to actually help others um, is, yeah, something that I haven't really heard happening and I really think should be happening, that we should be caring, thinking about people's, as you say, not just only their physical health, but their mental health and how we can actually guide people through to lead a healthier and ha ultimately a happier life. Well, we ask people to, to, we're inviting people to join us in this. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's not, this is not just some sort of thing where uh, take the money and run. We're talking about making a vast positive difference. And we, we invite people to come join us. Yeah, no, that's incredible. I think, I think so many people will be interested in hearing about this product. As you say, you'll get from some feedback from people about how they would love their healthcare to be improved and be better and taking all that on board. You can sort of put the, all of this into your apps. And that's why having the blockchain is so important because you can have lots of different apps working together to really help, help people. Yes, absolutely. I mean, could you imagine, just think about when you travel to different countries or for us, even if we travel to a different state and, and you got sick and people are clueless as to, yeah. to what's going on with you as far as like, what's your past medical history? What, what drugs are you taking mm -hmm. uh, that we have to be careful because what we're going to give you may interact with that that could awesome. cause harm. So it, we need to know exactly who and what we're dealing with uh, to be able to effectively treat that patient without harming that patient. So we feel like this is a vital part of healthcare. No, I completely, I completely. Agree. Well, thank you so much, Frank and Steve, for your time right. and speaking to me. I'm really excited about what you're doing, and I really hope that it does go global and really come together for so many different people to help their experience, as you say, in general life and as patients and people supporting them. And we thank you, yes, for, thank you. Uh, for allowing us to, uh, to be with you. It's very special for us and it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. Well, yeah, no, I really, really enjoyed chatting with you. It's been, as I say, like a breath of fresh air to hear something good and positive happening. And it makes you sort of leave this thinking, you know what, there's good going on in this world and there's a lot of positives we can take. So yeah, thank you for your time.